10 Most Terrifying Real-Life Cyborgs That Really Exist Did you think that cyborgs only live in the DC Universe? Then get ready to be terrified. Like Darth Vader or Cyborg, this half-human, half-machines actually exist on our planets. I'm not talking about some alien civilizations or some mysterious species. This is the magic of science. Blessed with advanced technologies, some of them really eradicated their flaws and are living an awesome life. Want to know more about them? Then stay tuned till the end. Hello and welcome back to the AI Universe. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to never miss an update on the new things we bring for you regarding the tech and the trends, but also the vital difference between the haves and the have-nots. That being said, let's begin the video. A cyborg is a hybrid entity that is partly mechanical and partly organic. Darth Vader from Star Wars is a fantastic illustration of a cyborg. He's a human whose body has been enhanced by technology. He's mostly human, but not fully. The term cyborg was invented in 1960, combining the words cybernetic and organism, and has mostly been used in fiction and as a theoretical idea since then. As science fiction ideas become more tangible, the definition of this phrase has evolved. Some people believe that persons who use any type of internal medical technology, such as pacemakers or cochlear implants, are technically cyborgs. The cyborg was first articulated in the United States in the 1960s, in an environment when the cybernetic theory was being applied to space race and Cold War issues, by combining individualism with control. The cyborg helped to demolish established distinctions between humans and non-humans. Since then, the cyborg has emerged as a key character in both technology and society. The cyborg has only lately been utilized in social science, notably feminist theory, as a tool for comprehending a world that is thought to be generally non-coherent at both individual and communal levels. Cyborgs blur the line between fact and fiction, allowing extreme political goals to be carried out. We have a list of 10 amazing real-life cyborgs, and I am sure this is going to blow your mind. Number 1. Rich Lee Rich Lee describes himself as a body hacker, biohacker, and grinder. Steve Howarth of Grindhouse puts magnets in Lee's ears. These magnets are the headset, not the ones that keep headphones in from sliding off. Lee no longer needs headphones because of these magnets. When his MP3 player is connected to these coils, he can hear music thanks to the miracle of electromagnetism. Lee has a magnet in his fingertips as well, and he hears music through his finger when he puts his finger in his ear and turns on his coil MP3. With this biomodification, Lee is living in the future. He has lost some hearing and is likely to lose it completely. Lee hopes to enable him to see at night using echolocation, similar to how bats do. Lee has yet to figure out how to make himself bat-like, but he aspires to one day become not only a real-life cyborg, but a real-life Batman. But we definitely don't want the Joker in real life. Number 2. Stellark Stelios Arcadu, or Stellark, as he is currently called, is a performance artist who uses art to investigate the limitations of the human body. He's done exciting stuff in the past, including putting sculptures in his stomach and rigging his body with electrodes so that someone could manipulate his body through the internet. Stellark now wears an ear on his arm. Yes, an ear on the arm. It is made up of both biological and artificial tissue and is attached to his body. He makes it obvious that the ear's purpose is not to assist him in hearing. It's for other people to hear through his own body's conduit. He installed a microphone in the ear so that it could send to an external receiver, a remote listening device. Number 3. Neil Harbison Neil Harbison, an activist and artist, was born without the capacity to discern color. He chose to modify that in 2004. He strapped an electrical antenna to the back of his head, which converts light wavelengths into vibrations that his brain intercepts as sound, allowing him to hear color. These frequencies can even travel beyond the visible spectrum, allowing him to hear infrared and ultraviolet frequencies. His body alteration was not always well received. When the antenna appeared in Harbison's passport photo, the British authorities took issue. To keep it in, Harbison challenged the authorities. He was the first legally acknowledged cyborg after winning. Number 4. Zach Vauter Zach Vauter, a software programmer from Seattle whose leg was severed above the knee in 2009, was the first to utilize the mind-controlled prosthetic limb in 2012. Targeted muscle reinnovation, a method that converts brain impulses into physical movements, was initially developed in 2003 for the upper limb prosthesis. 
Wouter's prosthesis, on the other hand, was groundbreaking since it was the first leg prosthetic to utilize it. Zach Wouter used his prosthetic leg to climb the 2100 stairs of the Willis Tower in Chicago in 2012. He took 53 minutes and 9 seconds to complete the task. Amazing, right? Number 5. Rob Spence Rob Spence, a filmmaker from Toronto, opted to replace his lost right eye with a prosthesis that included a wireless video camera. Spence built a prosthetic eye shell that could hold enough electronics in such a small limited space thanks to a collaboration with an RF wireless design business and a group of electrical experts. Before the battery dies, the camera can capture up to 30 minutes of footage. In the documentary, DSX, the iBorg documentary, Spence used the video acquired from his eye prosthesis. Number 6. Michael Korost Oral cyborgs are a thing of the past, now that cochlear implants have been around for a few decades. Damaged ear components are replaced with a cochlear implant. Sound signals are sent from a microphone affixed to the exterior of the skull near the ear to artificial devices surgically implanted within the ear canal. The signal transmits data to the auditory nerve, after which the body takes over and transmits audio data to the brain. Michael Korost has two of these implants after losing hearing in both ears. Korost is notable for being a science writer as well. As a result, he has been able to explain his experiences to individuals who are inquisitive about what it's like to be a cyborg. Number 7. Claudia Mitchell Mitchell is the first woman to get a bionic limb, and like most of the others on this list, she became a cyborg by accident. Despite spending four years in the Marine Corps, she lost her arm in a motorbike accident rather than during military duty. Her left arm was fully amputated. She informed multiple media that before she got her bionic arm, she used to peel bananas using both feet and one hand. The robotic limb was created for $3 million by the Rehabilitation Institute of Chicago. She sobbed the first time she peeled a banana with one hand. Science has become her god since then. Number 8. Amal Grafstra Radio frequency identification tags are a favorite of Amal Grafstra. RFIDs are the little chips that are implanted into dogs in case they become lost, or that are found on modern credit cards that allow tapping rather than swiping at the checkout counter. Grafstra inserted an RFID into one hand in 2005, in each palm. He now has an RFID. The Seattle-based Supergeek can open smart doors and unlock his vehicle and phone with his magic hands without having to do anything but be near them. This biohacker offers RFID items, including a do-it-yourself cyborg kit that allows you to implant RFID chips inside yourself. Number 9. Tim Cannon Tim Cannon desired to have his biometric data transmitted straight from his body. Why? That's because he's a biohacker. He went to a body modification conference in Germany and had Steve Howarth implant the device since the technology he desired was not allowed by American medical authorities. As we mentioned earlier, Howarth is employed by Grindhouse Wetware, which makes the Circadia, a gadget that meets Canon's needs. The Circadia wirelessly transfers data and charges the battery. It's like having a cell phone implanted beneath your skin. Grindhouse also sells a substance that glows beneath your skin which you can use to light up a tattoo or discover the keys you left under your car late at night. Finally, last one, number 10, Jerry Jalava. The Finnish programmer lost his left ring finger in a horrible motorbike accident. He inadvertently hit a deer barely a week after purchasing his new motorcycle. When he discovered he had missed the upper half of his finger, he lit a cigarette right away. Then, he chose a magical tool over a typical prosthesis in favor of something useful. His prosthetic had a 2GB USB connector. However, no knowledge is directly uploaded into his brain. He shows how being a cyborg does not necessitate being a robotic genius. That's it for the day, guys. We hope you have enjoyed the video. Don't forget to tell me how much these guys have fascinated you. Make sure to like the video and subscribe to our channel for such interesting topics. And we'll catch you in the next one. Until then, peace.